Hey everybody, I'm Sandy and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to talk about sewing machines and as a newbie sewer, what you should think about for a machine. So here in my studio for the newbies, we use a Brother CS6000i, which is a great machine, has lots of features, it's easy to use, and the price point is right for somebody that's entering into the DIY craft or sewing market. And it will do, for garment sewing, it will do pretty much everything that you need. It has a great buttonholer, um, it has a wonderful amount of stitches, it has a few fancy stitches that you can play with to do some edging and a few little um, embroidery uh, techniques. So it's a great little machine and I'm going to give you a quick once over on how to use it. But with every machine that you use, you need to read the instruction manual. That's key for your particular machine. But in general, machines are basically the same. They all have a top thread that comes down and a bobbin that comes up and the two come together to create a loop and that's what creates the stitch. Now you also want to make sure we're going to talk about tension. That's really important. And just a few techniques on how to actually use your sewing machine. And as we get further along, we'll talk about sewing garments and um, DIY crafts. All right. So let's get going. Okay. So this is the Brother CS6000i computer sewing machine. And it's a great little sewing machine to introduce you to the um, art of sewing. One of the things you want to set up, this has an out plug that goes into the outlet on the other end. And this is the power cord that goes into your machine. It only goes in one way. So that slides in there. All right, and you can see that that will turn the machine on. The other cord that you have is your foot pedal, and this has a little connector on the back, and you have your foot pedal, and right in the back of the machine, way back here, there is a little plug, and this slides right in there. Now, you're gonna put your foot pedal on the floor, and you wanna put it this way, because your foot is actually going to rest on it, just like a gas pedal. So, I use my right foot, even though I'm left-handed, but I think that um, it's just like driving a car. All right, the f more you press down on it, the faster the machine will go. The slower you press on it, the more gentle, the slower your machine will go. So now that we have our machine turned on, let's talk about the parts of the machine. All right, this machine has a flatbed that goes on it. A lot of the machines don't have that. And this is great because it has a little bit of an extension. It gives you room, extra space, so your fabric lays flat when you're sewing it and it doesn't pull. So we're gonna talk about the parts of your machine, all right? This is, there's a spool holder here for your thread. This On this machine, this little one is for a bobbin. This second one up here, this is in case you're going to do twin needle and you need a second spool of thread for that. This is a flywheel over here on the back. This, when you turn this, it makes the needle go up and down over here. On this machine, you have all of these stitches, and I'll put up a close-up photo of it. And also, here is where you determine what stitch you're going to do. So if you want to do stitch 00, which is the default on the machine, and that means the needle is to the left of center, that's where this machine happens to default to. You don't have to do anything, but if you want to do stitch 01, then uh, this set, first set of dials moves the first number, and this second set of dials moves the second number, so I would move it up to 01 if I wanted to use the center straight stitch with the needle in the center, which is the stitch that I prefer to use. This top dial also determines your stitch length, so the default is 2.5 stitches per inch, so if you want to increase that, say you want to do something with, you're testing the seam and you want to do a basting seam, you would do a larger number. It would have to be a special kind of fabric to use a smaller number because those stitches are so tiny. And you really want to make sure that, you know, if there's stress on your seam, that the seam is going to let go and not the fabric is going to rip. So you have to be very careful about how tight your stitches actually are. This dial up here is the tension, and we don't want to move this unless we have tension issues, and that would be not having an even stitch on both sides. And I'll show you what a good tension stitch looks like. The other important thing that you always need is your manual. This is critical because 
these machines are uh, heavy equipment, sort of to so to speak, and they can be um, dangerous. You don't want little kids playing with them. I have seen people stick a needle through their finger uh, when the machine is going up and down because it's going too fast, and that's a problem. So you want to make sure that you read your manual. You know exactly what you're doing when you operate your machine, and you operate it very carefully. You don't want to break a needle and have it come flying at you, and you certainly don't want your finger a needle to go through your finger. The other options on this machine, some of the other features, this is a speed controller. So one arrow is really slow and three arrows is very fast. So as a beginner, it gives you the option of going very, very slow. No matter how far you, how fast you push that pedal down, the machine will actually slow down. All right, and then this but first button here, it's with a needle and a piece of and a line across it. That will help your needle go up and down. So you can push it and the needle will go up or you at the end of your stitching or you can push it at the beginning of your stitching and the needle will go down. This is your reverse button. So those are really the things that you wanna learn right off the bat. Right now we're gonna talk about threading the machine in the bobbin. So you can go to your manual and it will tell you how to thread your machine. There is also instructions, typically, right on the top of the machine, it will tell you where the thread goes and they're numbered and how to do it. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to wind a bobbin. Now the bobbin and the top thread come together to form a loop here at the needle and that's what actually makes your stitches. And something important to remember about the bobbins, this is a bobbin for this machine they are not all created equal. A button, a bobbin, excuse me, a bobbin for a brother is not the same as a bobbin for a faff or a bernina. They are very unique to each style of machine, so you need to keep that in mind. So you can't go out and just buy a random package of bobbins and expect it to work in your machine. All right, so up top here, you have three little uh, holders and this one in the back is going to be the one for my thread. So I'm going to put my thread on the holder. All right, in this case, I have black thread. And I am, for the bobbin now, I am going to follow the manufacturer's instructions and I'm going to wind it counterclockwise around this little spoke here. And then I am going to thread it. And when you thread the bobbin, you can see that there are little holes in the top. So the thread needs to go from the middle section through one of those holes. So it looks like this. Then that bobbin is placed on the bobbin holder, which in this machine happens to be here, and you make sure it's secure and all the way down. And you're gonna hold this tail. This one slides in. Whoops. This one slides in so it's engaged. And once it's engaged on this machine, what it does, I'm gonna move this over here. What it does is it tells you that, so I'm engaged, this comes out like this, and I've engaged it, and that tells the machine that you're going to make a bobbin. Now you're going to hold this tail up, and you're gonna slowly push on the presser foot, and it's gonna spin the bobbin, and you know your bobbin is working properly when the thread is going up and down. Now when you get to a certain point, you're going to want to cut this thread. And you're gonna cut, snip that thread, you don't need it anymore. And then you're going to fairly slowly wind your bobbin because one of the things that you wanna do is you don't wanna stretch this thread as it's actually going through and being wound on the bottom. So you wanna do that fairly slowly. Now if you're going to do a big project, you wanna wind the whole bobbin. If you've done a small project, then you only need to wind a bit of the bobbin. We're gonna slide this back and pull the bobbin off. And we need to cut the threads between the, the thread that's on the machine that's gonna be the upper thread and the bobbin. So now my bobbin's wound and I have a little tail, which I need, which you can't see. There it is, thin as a thread. Okay, we're gonna do a real close up of the threading of the machine. So my thread is on this tall pole here. It's gonna hold my spool of thread. There is always a, some sort of notch. Okay, now there's multiple notches. This one is for the bobbin, but we just want the notch that's going to keep the thread going straight across here so it's not dragging down. Then there's also usually an up and down. There's a looper in here inside the side that makes the thread go up and down. So we're going to go down and up and then take the flywheel 
and catch. You can see that looper moving up and down and there's a hook in there. You wanna catch the thread on that. And you're gonna go straight down and there should be a catch down here at the bottom. There's a catch right here at the bottom. And then you're going to thread the needle front to back. And the hole of the needle is down here at the bottom. All right, now some machines will have a fancy needle threader. I, I do tend to do it by hand, it just, it's an old habit. All right, now down here, it's gonna tell you how to put the bobbin in. So you wanna make sure that you do that correctly. I'm just gonna slide the machine that way so it's in the right spot for the camera. This has a little tab on the side, you push it down and that will pop open the, pop open the cover for the bobbin, the bobbin cover. And it tells you that you want the bobbin to go in this way. So the bobbin is actually turning counterclockwise. So you're just going to drop in the bobbin. Then you're going to go behind this little arrow. There's an arrow, there's a little smiley face there. So you go behind that and up and around, all the way around. And then there's an automatic cutter in there for this machine. And if you pull on this bobbin thread, it will cut the tail off. So now you have something that's nice and clean. You slide the cover back on, it just snaps in place, and you're ready to go. All right, your bobbin thread's done, your upper thread's done. Now we're ready to talk about some stitches, and we're ready to sew. All right, now we're gonna talk about the needle position, and on this machine, um, we're gonna talk about double zero and zero one. The double zero is the default on this machine, which moves your needle to the left of center. The def and then if you want the, your needle in the center, which is where I like to sew, it is O one. So you're just going to, these two buttons, this first button here will change this first number, and this second button will change the second number. So you want number O one. That's my preferred number. Some people like to prefer sew on the O0, but I think I get a truer seam allowance when I'm sewing on that. And yeah, we're gonna give it a try. So this tab, hmm, let's see, how can we make you see this? There is a tab under here that lifts your presser foot up and down. All right, you see this, see the presser foot right here? This is the presser foot. And see, when I push down on it, the presser foot goes down, and when I push up on it, the presser foot goes up. So it's important when you put your fabric in that the presser foot is up. All right, now we're ready to sew. I have my needle, my thread coming through my needle, and inside this presser foot, I'm just there's a little groove in there. I'm just going to run the thread through that and bring it back. I'm going to put my fabric underneath the presser foot, put the presser foot down. I'm going to start with the needle in my fabric. That's the best way for the machine to start. And on this machine, there's a needle down position, so you're going to push that and the machine will automatically make the needle go down. Now, I'm going to guide the fabric with a hand on either side. I am not going to pull on it. I'm not going to push on it. I'm going to kind of just let the machine take the fabric very gently. There's feed dogs down here and they will move the fabric forward for me. I'm gonna push very gently at first on the presser foot. Now with this machine, one of the best parts about this machine is it stops with a needle in the down position, which is great. We love that. You can use this button to bring the needle back up again. That down up button will bring the needle down or up. Then we're going to raise the presser foot up again and pull this piece that we've just sewn off to the left and give it a little clip. Now, here we have a straight line of straight stitches front and back. They're even on the front and the back. The stitches look the same on the front as they do on the back. So that means that our tension is good. If you have loops or if it's all bunchy in the back, then there's something wrong with your tension. All right, I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial about how to use your sewing machine and some just some basics about using a machine. Remember, your manual, that's the most important thing. It will tell you everything you need to know about your sewing machine. And I hope you can join me as we explore 
some projects, some DIY craft projects, and some garment sewing, and a lot of garment fitting. And I hope to see you soon. Go forth, sew what's fabulous. Bye.